Hello and welcome back. I'm with Xander again. By the way, I'm Azzy. I am Xander. That's me. Yeah. And this is Obscure and Dead Reviews, and we are reviewing Kaylin Mikla's new album released October 15th. It is unpronounceable by me because I kept spitting on myself and practicing, and I cannot do it. I can't pronounce it either. But it translates to Under the Cold Northern Lights, which is very appropriate for how delicate, as Xander put it um, off before we started recording, how delicate this album is. Yeah, so, you know, if, if you're familiar with Kayla Mikla, Mikla at all, of their debut album, you know, it, it is a very um, wintry and icy album, but it's also very um, harsh and frantic and aggressive in an interesting way. It's very, you know, they, they really sell the, the Ice Witch brand um, <laughs> if that is a brand, I'm making it a brand. It's a brand. The brand um, that they started on Not After You're Not. Yes, yeah. exactly. Um, <clears throat> you know, there, there's a lot of kind of shrieking and wailing on that album. Um, that's kind of surprising that you wouldn't necessarily expect. And on this album, this new record, there is a little bit of that, but is it is significantly dialed back. And I think right. what stood out to me so much about the the new album by Kila Mikola is it's a it's a, uh, more frail. It's a little more um, not not subtle. I forget the word I use. It's less aggressive. It's a little more. Um, I would even hazard to say a little more uh, regal in some of the uh, ways that these tracks are composed. Uh, you know, there there are uh, slower tracks on on this album um, with a slower beat. Uh, the, the the textures they use for like synthesizers are not so abrasive so much as they are just kind of um wintry like a like a gentle snowfall yep. and i thought that was um it says it all in the album cover it does yeah if you've seen the album cover uh that is actually a good visualization of what to expect here mm-hmm. uh, in terms of the, of the types of sounds that they use um it's uh yeah it's just a it's a it's a to me i mean as and i uh, i think we have a uh, differ different takes on uh, this album and its strengths, but uh, I, I like it because I, I think it I, I think they lean into the the um, uh, more of that ice witch vibe that I, that I really dig. Um, I think it's more um, um, it, it's more dramatic in a different way. That's not so much angry, so much as just it's kind of like it's kind of forlorn. It's a little more um, um, introspective, looking out a window at a at a new uh, fresh coat of snow, a fresh blanket of snow. Um, in the morning, and I, I like that. I thought that the collaboration with Alcest on uh, track nine, can't pronounce it, not even gonna try to. Uh, I thought that was really great. If you, if you know Alcest, Alcest were a, they started off as kind of a uh, a black metal band that gra- as they progressed throughout their, throughout his career, started incorporating more like shoegaze and dream pop elements into his sound. Uh, he's a big fan of Cocteau Twins. So I thought that that was a really cool Collaboration. I thought it made a lot of sense. You can kind of hear that on that track on some of the, the layers of of uh, guitar that they use. Um, and in the the last track, uh, Salmon, Simon, um, probably butchering that. I'm sorry, Kaylin Mikla. But, probably the easiest you know, one to pronounce too. It it is, but I I'm I'm probably still butchering it. <laughs> but it's uh it's you know it's not uh, again it's just a, a nice uh, I thought a very nice footnote, a uh, very nice subtle gentle. Um, kind of farewell for, for uh, these for these uh, for these ten tracks. So for me, it is kind of their their uh, statement that they are here and they're a, a, a good or they're they're a very um, um, worthwhile force in this uh, in this goth dark wave industrial milieu that we all we all find ourselves in. But what do you think, Azzy? Well, I mean, I it's a powerful album in its own way, as you said. But for me. Um, It's not something that I would want to actively listen to again, Um, because even though it has like an ebb and flow, it's a very soft ebb and flow that doesn't really grab me when I personally listen to music. So this is just an issue of personal preference. Um, Mm -hmm. It lacked sort of that dramatization uh, that was on No Tefture Not, just the raw anguish and emotion of their 2018 release. Um, except for on track five, which is also one of their single tracks, which kind of had that, that wailing. And that's one of the things that I liked 
that I really like about Kayla Mikla is that they're able to go from that softness to a harshness to just this raw emotive power. And this album, in my opinion, is definitely more subdued. And yeah, uh, you know, personal preference. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's a lot softer. It's a lot more ambient. Um, it's a lot more. Um, the, there there are several tracks like on, on Noft, F Dear Not that I think are you could very easily play for a dance floor. This album, not so much. Uh, I think there's one or two tracks. I think it's maybe either track three or track four that does have kind of that steady four four post punk beat. But um, what's that? I said maybe. Yeah, but most of these songs are not trying to get you to dance. Most of these songs are, um, they're uh, slow, they're a little, a little more ethereal. Mm -hmm. um, me being the huge fan of ethereal music I am, that's probably why I enjoyed this album as much as I did. Um, these were, uh, the, yeah, they were just, they were they, they were gentler songs. They were um, more, um, a little more an air of like mystique about them. Um, but I thought the, the production I thought was really uh, excellent. It, you know, it, it has a lot of, uh, it's, it's immaculately produced. It has a lot of very um, subtly beautiful layers of instrumentation. A lot of the tracks that take their time to reveal themselves. Mm -hmm. I think on the track you mentioned, uh, track five, you know, it, it has those really kind of tragic sweeping moans of synthesizers um, that again, really sell me on the artwork. Um, and I, I, I really enjoyed that. I would actually, I would take another album full of, of that particular uh, sound. I, um, I think that this is an album that if I really wanted to get into it, um, I'm sure it's the same for other people. I can't imagine why it wouldn't be, but the way that I listen to an album and the way that I react to an album is very much dependent on how I'm feeling, how my mood is, where I'm mm -hmm. at emotionally, which, yeah, I, I'm not special in this. I'm not saying I am, but I think that in the right context, this album would hit very, very hard. Mm -hmm in a very positive, like cathartic kind of way. But because I haven't been in the, those, like a mind frame that would be conducive to that, it just, it didn't hit me as, as much as, as you know, some of their older material. Yeah, I, I hate using words like mature to describe <laughs> bands and their sound, but I feel like if I, if I were like some hackneyed music journalist, like writing for like, Pitchfork or all music or some bullshit. I think this is the album that they would just say like, "Oh, this album is mature because it's not as angry sounding as their as their previous album was." Well, um, would we say mature because it's less angry, or would you say mature because it has more complex melodies? I would say in this case, I think it just has more complex melodies, and okay, I think that so show. I think that does show like genuine artistic uh, growth and certainly new artistic um, ambitions. I, I do absolutely agree with that. And yeah. I hate to, oh God, I hate fucking this uh, comparison. Uh, comparing them to Bjork. And mm -hmm. it's not just because they're Icelandic. It's, it's not at all because of that. It's because Bjork across her career did so many different things, explored so many different concepts. Um, and no like, two albums have ever sounded exactly alike with Bjork. Hmm? No two albums that Bjork has oh. released have ever sounded exactly alike, ever. Right, and and um, I, I think we can say the same thing with a lot of Kaylin Mikla's uh, ethos and the way that they write music as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's a good comparison. I love Bjork, um, and and uh, B B Bjork is is I, I feel like is also an honorary Icelandic ice witch uh, in her own right. <laughs> so there's another point of comparison that we can make. Yeah, I didn't um, want to. I, I really wish that that like I, it wasn't a comparison because they're all Icelandic. It was just it's the best comparison I could think of mm -hmm. in terms of uh, stylistic permutations. Totally. No, I agree with you for sure. I think it it makes sense and um, it it has uh, there there are like I I think it's track three or four. I I should have. Memorizes before I, I jumped on the on the call with you, but even during moments that are a little more four four and rhythmic, I, I think they are almost aiming just for kind of popular popier melodies too. Um, 
just with the way they sing the choruses and the, the the texture of the synthesizers, I think they are like even just leaning into some pop music territory, which is great in their own like odd way. I didn't catch that. I would have to listen specifically for that and see if I agree with you. Yeah, that's that. I mean, I, I played one of these tracks recently in a DJ set, and it, it had it got a good response. So maybe that's just my own uh, perception, but um, but it is definitely it is for the most part, especially compared to. Noft after not. Am I pronouncing that right? Uh, not after not. Not after not. I, yeah. That. The only reason uh, I know how to pronounce it is because they sing it a ton, a ton of times in the title track. Oh. <laughs> there you go. But uh, compared to that album, this is most certainly not a dance floor record. So don't. Um, mm-hmm. I would not go into this record expecting that. Um, but I still think it's really lovely. And if you are as fond of pretty, pretty, floaty, floaty things as I am. I think you will find a lot to, yeah, with the with the, the twinkling finger finger movements. I think you will find a lot to like about uh, this record. What was your favorite track? I would have to go with the collaboration with Alcest. I thought that was really lovely. Um, I have enjoyed Alcest um, kind of passively over the last few years, um, and I haven't thought about him in a while. But this track was a lovely reminder of the really cool stuff he does, and I, I thought it was a great collaboration. And I would happily listen to more. Nice. Well, I been talking it's the only track i've been talking about track five <laughs> uh that one was my favorite the the one that kind of hit back on some of their previous material but um yeah as always go listen to it uh let us know what you think of course the links are below you can also search them in uh band camp there this album's on spotify too um and uh i guess uh tell us who you agreed with do you agree with xander who's over here or do you agree with me Actually, no. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to taint your enjoyment, but I do want to hear what you think. Don't taint the jury pool. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you guys next time. Love you. Bye.